Hello, welcome to my sunny book review. Um, I'm going to be talking about Memories of Summer by Ruth Dwight. So, um, this book, it's not summer. Uh, I just picked it up. It was free at my high school, which is why it has a blur on it. Because it has my address um, at my high school, which wouldn't be very good. It's hot. But, um, let's talk about it a little bit. It's by Ruth White. I picked this up on a whim. So, if I were to, like, rate the reading level, it's a pretty easy read, which was kind of nice. Um, emotionally, not so easy, but physically. Um, the pace was pretty fast, pretty, like, normal fast, and that was cool. Um, here's a cover reveal. Okay, so... I feel like I actually want to go in depth. This is one of the better books I've read in a while. Um, I feel like I'm going to actually get a 10. And it's like April. That's crazy. Uh, but anyway. So it's about um, two sisters. Uh, young young women, per se. Um, a younger sister who is called Lyric. And her older sister called Summer. Um, Memories of Summer. That's the title. You got it. Um, and. That was important. And. <coughs> kind of Lyric's journey to seeing summer schizophrenia kind of develop um and it was a good read it was really sad um and so I'll, I'll hit on just some of the main points so it takes place in the 1940s i believe somewhere around there 1950s sorry 1955 um and i kind of they start in kind of a rural area and move to flint michigan and i don't really read historical fiction it's just like not something i've ever really like gravitated towards um but I actually really enjoy this. I didn't think it was, like, too heavy. I have a hard time when they talk about war just because, number one, I feel like I'm not educated enough about war. The only thing we've ever learned um, in relation to war in school is, like, the American Revolution five times over. Um, and so I don't feel very educated on that. But um, I think that and just my general interest don't really align with... I'm more interested in, like, the homeland type of uh, problems or whatever. But anyway... Um, this didn't really touch on anything, like, too topical. It had a couple references, and uh, I also was kind of my gripe with the book a little bit, was, um, I felt like Ruth White, I'm, you know, I'm a professional judger, so this is my opinion's right on this, but I felt like she was afraid to tackle some of the more serious issues, um, of the time. Like, I felt like there were, I, I felt occasionally Lyric, um, the main character was kind of like a Mary Sue, like, she was just the perfect character. Um, in relation to, like, that kind of era, too, I felt like it would have been better if she had kind of, like, instilled at least, like, a little bit of, like, a conflict in that regard. Um, I felt like she just dodged a lot of the main problems, like, of the racism and discrimination at the time, of, um, the use of shock therapy, um, I feel like there were other things, too, I'm just not thinking of, um, and she just kind of, like, glossed over it a little bit at one point, um, Lyric, the main character, meets a girl, I'm blanking on her name, um, but it's not really important, and she talks about how her mother, um, was a colored woman, and she was like, oh my god, I didn't even know, and they became best friends or whatever, and I actually enjoyed that part of the book, but I felt like it was so brushed over in a way that was, like, I wish that it would have become more relevant in the story somehow, I feel like a lot of the way she treated, um, problems of this era was just to be like, well, I don't believe in it, so we're just not going to talk about it, and I just feel like it wasn't realistic, and it was kind of disappointing to read. I feel like, it, I, I just feel like it glossed over a lot of problems at the time, which is a little problematic. Um, so, throughout the book, uh, Summer kind of develops worsening schizophrenia, and I, at, at the very end, spoilers, <laughs> um, she's, and no one's going to read this. This is like, I don't, I don't, I don't even think there's like a fandom on this book or anything. It's, it was free, okay? <laughs> um, so as she kind of, like, moves on and develops a schizophrenia, we look back into her childhood and weird things that she had or, like, unusual traits that, you know, they saw and were like, oh, she's kind of funny, you know? Um, and instead of, like, actually realizing they may be a sign of a, a problem or a bigger problem. And I... So later on in the book, when they send her to a, like... I don't know if they were officially called asylums at that point. Um they use shock therapy on her. Um, obviously they didn't tell the, the dad and uh, the sister Lear. Um, and they were like, don't do that again because she's afraid of electricity. And it's a good point, but it felt like that whole thing was just like a plot to kind of like, it, like be like, well, I didn't, I wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Like, well, if I was in, if I was in that time period, I would be like this. And I just felt like sometimes it wasn't always like super realistic or like kind of thought out, but I, I did kind of enjoy 
the subtlety, like there were aspects of it that I thought was beautiful in the way that they kind of address things, but I did feel like the character was a bit of a Mary Sue. And all these problems were just like, oh, oops, you know? They were just took a very lighthearted tone, which kind of makes sense due to the character's age, but also doesn't make sense because of the time period it takes place in. I don't read a lot of historical fiction, so maybe that's why. Um, but I did feel like there were more song references than there was references to actual problems at the time. Even though I don't like reading historical fiction, it's important to acknowledge that those were things that were happening. Um, I thought it was interesting to read about, like, Flint, Michigan at the time, which was, like, a bustling kind of place. Um, and kind of the, the, the problem with the poverty at the time and people were moving there. Um, and I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the kind of, um, moving from the super mountainy, like, kind of idyllic life into a life that you would expect to be a lot better, but ends up being a lot worse. Um, I'm obviously from nature. <laughs> I'm not from like a bustling city or anything. Um, and I could kind of connect with, with her kind of descriptions of nature and, and the beauty and the comfort that you don't experience when you're in a city and how isolating it can feel. Um, even just being in city temporarily, I'm like, wow, everyone here is kind of, kind of terrible. Like, they're just mean and all that stuff. Um, no offense to all the, the, any of the city slickers out there, but, um, I, God, I, I feel like I'm going to get sunburned. Anyway, I've got, I've got a book to review. <laughs> so, let's get into the more meat of the book, which is the sisters, like, schizophrenia in general journey across the book. So, represented as, like, a very, hello, okay a very like perfect woman um she's beautiful she's smart she's witty she gets along with boys like all this stuff um and especially as she moves to michigan from i don't remember where she was from but it's somewhere not important oh, virginia um yes um and I, I felt like a lot of the representations were really good um, of, of like how it kind of is like a slow journey, but it's triggered by something. So you could feel it a little bit um, when they moved to Flint because originally, you know, her sister was like a little quirky. Um, and in the beginning of moving to Flint, she was just still a little quirky. Um, quirky as in like showing signs of mental illness, <laughs> um, but still like uh, functional, I guess. I, I don't know about that term, but um, as in she could like support herself fully. Um, I thought, like, another thing that they... Ah, sorry, I gotta remember to put that later. Remind me to talk about parentification, because you, you can talk. Um, and I, I think, yeah, I, I definitely think it was kind of realistic at the time to be... Especially with girls, I feel like sometimes in the past when they had more mental illness, you'd be like, oh, that's quirky. Um, and it still happens today, obviously, but... Um, like, star girl, it's like, okay, she... I, I think she has some, some other... I don't think she's just quirky. <laughs> I think she needs some support. Um, it's kind of a random reference, but anyway. Um, it also talks about like her kind of devolving and how the family was trying to support her throughout that time. Um, her father just worked a ton because he needed to make money, um, which is fair. Um, and they had tried to hire care workers and all this stuff, but it just didn't work. Um, because she would escape them, or eventually she would start injuring them. And I think it was really important, the distinction between, like, this is who my sister is, and this is her mental illness, and they overlap, but they're not the same thing. Um, and I think that Ruth, the author of this book, really represented that in a way that was kind of, uh, beautiful, I think. I think if you've seen someone who struggled with mental illness and watched it kind of devolve over time... I think it's a book that you can kind of relate to and kind of be like, oh, that was how it happened, you know? Um, and kind of her family's reluctancy to admit her into a place where even though she could get more help, she felt like, oh, well, we need to take care of her, you know? Even though it's not always the best. Although maybe sending her to the home wasn't the best, you know? Um, but kind of the struggle with that decision as well, like in the end, like deciding like, okay, I'm going to put her into this ward or whatever. And kind of their struggles with, like, is that fair to her? You know, she has a limited understanding of the world. And she basically only knows us. And our positive associations are from when we lived in a whole different place. And with people. Um, and I enjoyed that kind of depiction of the struggle of, I think what's best for you is different. I don't know how to exactly word it. Um, but two things can be good for someone at the same time. Being sent to this asylum could be good because it's provided her structure. And obviously they couldn't keep her safe eventually. She started trying to light fires and beat people up and 
she wasn't listening if there was like a tornado warning or something and it was really dangerous um she was running away all that stuff to keep her physically safe versus what she thinks is best and i i enjoy that kind of depiction of struggle i think it was really realistic um and i think a lot of people could relate i also think it could be used to educate a lot of people another thing that i feel like they touched on um or this author touched on was parentification um so her mom i'm pretty sure she died yeah she did die um and so it's just her sister her and her dad and because of her sister's kind of like problems and the fact that they can't always have a caretaker they don't they don't have the money or people don't want to do it because she's dangerous um and it kind of creates lyric who's like 14 essentially being a parent and not being able to do her kind of child activities uh, or young teenager teenager activities they're just hanging out with their friends like even just like getting s like soda at the local place or you know all that stuff she feels responsible for taking care of her sister um and eventually the dad kind of realizes that it's taking away a, you know lyrics childhood essentially because she isn't allowed to have the freedom to kind of explore herself and her life um and everything she does is kind of related to summer um even the book <laughs> i did think it was interesting in the beginning of the book it says um where is it uh, dedicated to the memory of my sister Audrey, which makes me wonder if the author has, like, personal experience with this, and that was kind of what it was based on, um, which is probably, explains a lot of the realisticness of it, and the small details. I'm glad they actually acknowledged the damage that it was doing to Lyric. I feel like a lot of books just kind of gloss over that a little bit sometimes, um, because I think being a caretaker constantly when you're a, barely a teenager, um, would obviously leave some effects on the psyche, <laughs> um, I thought that was good. I thought, I, I think it was, I just think it was an accurate depiction of kind of the, I also think some of the class struggles were kind of um, well done, kind of feeling like you want to go home to like a poorer place just because it had more community. I think a great point um, that Ruth kind of mentioned was, you know, when Lyric was young, there was the crazies, you know, the crazy people in, in her hometown, and there's one woman, you know, kids used to run around and, like, I think try to throw things at her or something for entertainment, because it was like, oh, she's reacting, it's scary, you know, and kind of lyrics, like, own recognition that that was something that she never saw twice about until it affected her, um, and I thought that that was really important, I think a lot of times we distance ourselves from the people who are mentally ill, um, and I think it's really dangerous and, um, apathetic, because, you know, I feel like everyone's had an experience where they've seen someone who was like, you know, a crackhead on the streets or whatever and been like, oh my god, she's crazy, or, or laugh or something, without recognizing this was a person who likely had family and had a life and was a person before all of this, and it still kind of is a person in there, but just someone who's struggling more than anything, and kind of like recognizing that sometimes we only see things as soon as we're personally affected by them, which I think books like this are incredibly helpful for. You know, the more people read books like this and can kind of see the depth of mental illness, how it devolves, um, and all that stuff, I think it would make people much more compassionate, because they don't know the full story, and who they are, um, they just kind of assume based on what they look like, uh, or who they look like they are, um, and I just thought that was, like, kind of an important note that you can kind of take away from the book, um, which is why I could see kind of a younger audience with this, um, book, it wasn't super dark, it was sad, and I think if you're someone who's been around that stuff, it would be extra sad, um, and kind of experience it might also be comforting in the fact that you could relate to some of the things um and i lost my train of thought but i i think yeah for the for the kind of younger generation i i could see it actually being beneficial because like i said you don't care about it and you don't realize that people are people until it's like personally connected to you um because humans are just kind of inherently me 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 <laughs> And I think it's kind of an important lesson to realize this is somebody, someone, and they are someone. Does that make sense? Because I think a lot of times people are like, well, this is somebody's daughter. And it, it kind of, what I wanted, it, I was, I was going to say that, but I feel like it removes it from the fact that this is also a person, you know? She's not just someone's daughter or someone's sister. She was also a person. And, and life, um, camera just froze. Okay. <laughs> um... Yeah, I really enjoyed this book. I mean, you can tell it's 15 minutes talking. I could continue to talk about it, and this book's only... Hundred and it's a really short book. Hundred and twenty five ish, twenty hundred thirty. Um Yeah, I thought it was good. I thought especially if you kind of like are like are relate to some of the things, like moving out of a city and 
or town into a city. Um, and some of the historical references were kind of interesting. Um, I think it was pretty emotional, just kind of her relation to connecting to her sister before and her relation after. Um, because it was just so different. And I thought she did a pretty good job setting that up. I, I didn't, I was, I, I liked how she didn't treat it like a plot twist. Um, I feel like sometimes authors do that in an attempt to connect with their audience and it kind of makes it distance. Because a lot of people with schizophrenia, they have signs um, and people just don't see them. And especially at that time, um, you know, it was likely to be rushed. I was, oh, she's just quirky, you know, until it was too bad for them to kind of handle. Um, and I felt like she did a good job of just being like, my sister will end up schizophrenic by the end of the book, but you're going to see the journey of it, you know? And I feel like when you know how a book's going to turn out and you still enjoy it, I think that's a whole, that's a big sign of a, a talented writer. Um, I definitely think this book is underappreciated. I feel like this would, you know, just do well on TikTok or something. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it's similar to the other book I'm about to read, The Bell Jar, which I don't know if it's similar yet because I haven't read it, but... Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about kind of this underrated book. The last time it was checked out according to this was 2008, so I think it's kind of died out a little bit. I think this book was written in 1997, I think, around that time. Um, so obviously, there's even more that we know now about, you know, schizophrenia and mental illness and all that stuff. Um, so I kind of enjoyed kind of hearing the historical take on it, but also how I believe it would be similar, even in modern time, you know, like, people don't recognize that people need help or that people are people even if they are mentally ill um and we'll preachy but i thought it was good some of the like subtleties of it were just beautiful um even the parts that i didn't like i was i was able to kind of appreciate them um nonetheless i kind of it's it's i think it was great too it was just fast paced and it was an easy read for a topic that's really um uh, emotionally difficult so I thought that in a way that kind of format was good because it didn't lead it to being like um, redundantly depressed. It wasn't like I was like, oh, I don't want to read this anymore. I'm sad, you know. It was that I was able to kind of continue with that. Um, and one of the end lines was really good too. It, it She basically repeats a line that her sister had said to a boy when kind of like flirting or whatever. Oh, I want to talk about shame too. That was another thing. Um, and she says it at the end, the same thing her sister once said, and I felt like that was a really good way to come back to everything, like, and recognize, like, this happened, I'm a different person, but she's still there, you know? And I thought that that was really important. Oh, shame, I was going to talk about. Um, Lyric is very ashamed of her sister, um, and I feel like sometimes people can see shame and, and kind of face it with judgment and be like, why would you be ashamed? Like, that's kind of toxic, it wasn't like she chose to be this way, um... But I felt like in the way that it was written in the book, it was, you know, almost sisterly, um, if that makes sense. I think sometimes it's human nature to kind of want to hide your siblings <laughs> because they're, that you think they're prettier than you, which is something she talked about in the beginning of the book. Or, you know, they're, they're mentally ill, and especially at the time they didn't have the understanding we have now. So you would be ashamed because you wouldn't understand why your sister had kind of been this way. Um, and you wouldn't be able to kind of understand that none of it was her fault, especially when you're a kid. You don't really have the complex thought enough to think about it. Um, but I appreciated her at kind of the end, recognizing that that was um, kind of not the ideal way to go about it, <laughs> because it doesn't work, you know? Um, and, yeah, it was, it was devastating. It was beautiful. Um, I think her sister being able to recognize her deterioration made it more devastating, you know? Um... I think it's weird. They start off with her kind of already being a little schizophrenic, and it happens pretty fast in the book. Obviously, it's a short book. I sometimes wish she'd drawn out the beginning a little bit more so we could understand more of it, but I also kind of don't because I felt like one of the beauties of it was that it wasn't super slow-paced because um, you're able to see, like, how fast everything felt. I felt like if books can communicate the or, or have the pace of how the story feels connect to the pace of the pages then I feel like you're golden, you know, because you're perfectly in their head, you know. If lines are a lot faster, they're going to seem more stressful. Um, if lines are slower, it may be, like, dreary or drawly. I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> I, I don't read a lot. Um, so I, I, I enjoyed this book. I thought it talked about shame, mental illness, sisterly love. No, it was love. Um, and, you know, the time period and friendships and parentification and shame. I think I already said that one. Um, I'd give it a 9.5 out of 10.
<laughs> I'd give it a 9. Honestly, I, I think this is a better book I've read in a while. Actually got me out of a reading slump, so I can't fault it for that. Um, and the cover's gorgeous. <laughs> Let's see if I can cover it like in a better way. My whole address number. My school. It's beautiful, and that's why I pick it up. <laughs> and and the, dude, it's got a great elevator pitch. Um, uh, yeah, but I, I'm curious as to see the author's experience because it felt like a genuine kind of rendition of everything that happened. Also kind of credited to the short pace. Um, I wonder if that was kind of like her memory of it was kind of like, it was a short period of time as well. I think that's part of it. You can only should write so much about like a year's progress, you know? Um, even though Breaking Bad did it well, so <laughs> I can't follow them for that, but, um, yeah, I thought it was good. Um, I'd recommend it, um, even though I just spoiled the whole book, so it's too late. Um, just kidding. It's weird, though. You can hear the ending, and you, you still want to read it. That's the crazy part, and, and I think the part that was beautiful about it. And you could see her compassion that she kind of took around the angle of this sort of mental illness, and I do think it might have something to do with her own personal experience as an author. Um, and I thought it was good. Overall, very good. Got me out of a reading slump. Fast read. Would recommend. Forcing my kids to read it one day, maybe. I don't know if it's easy to find, because it is an old book, and I I don't think, I, everyone I talked about it, like, I've never heard of that, I'm like, okay, cool, but it was free, and it was a good read, so, we don't see a lot of literature like that anymore, I feel like, you know, where it's, it's like, simple and peaceful and childlike in a way, um, talks about her friends and all that stuff, but also kind of in-depth and, and gorgeous and depressing. So, yeah, this is just me adding random, random watching bits. Um, I hope you enjoyed my book review of Memories of Summer by Ruth White. Um, read it. Bye. Da, 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 da. Where is the pause button?